What's up, folks? It's your buddy, Fiddle Ruddy. Tonight, we're going to be doing the Raw recap. We started off with everybody on the stage and Vince McMahon in the ring. He introduces Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Triple H thanks the WWE superstars for their performance and then asks all the women to step forward. Triple H thanks the women for everything they've done in a very heartfelt speech and said he was very proud of what they've accomplished. Stephanie McMahon then makes the announcement that on October 28th, there will be an all-women's pay-per-view called Evolution. This will include 50 WWE superstars, and all three women's championships from Raw, SmackDown, and NXT will be defended at this pay-per-view, but as far as any other matches, we're not sure yet. We start off with Elias being up on the stage. He's quickly interrupted by the Deleter of Worlds, which brings us to our first match, the B-Team versus the Deleter of Worlds in a Raw Tag Team Championship rematch. This was a pretty good match. I liked it. Bray Wyatt fell down on top of Curtis Axel and Matt Hardy, allowing Curtis Axel to get the pin and retain the Tag Team Championships. After the match, the Deleter of Worlds applauded the B-Team, and then the B-Team got a twist of fate and Sister Abigail for winning. We then go backstage with Chad Gable and Finn Balor talking, and Finn Balor finds out that he was moved over to a kid's house as his new locker room. I guess we're still continuing to Daniel Bryan and Big Cass, I'm bigger than you, you're smaller, so you're not as good storyline. We then have a backstage interview with Bailey and Sasha Banks. Looks like they're now best of friends again. Jesus Christ, we've gone through this, I don't know how many months of buildup. Each of them getting into each other's faces, they're turning on each other, hitting each other, they get into fights backstage, now they go into counseling, now they're best friends. I seriously thought we were getting a heel turn, but obviously not, this is going to be ridiculous. Just please, make up your mind, are you going to have them as friends, or are you going to have them as enemies? You keep going back and forth, back and forth, and it's nerve-wracking. Anyways, this goes to our next match, Sasha Banks and Bailey versus a couple of jobbers. As you can guess, this was a squash match. Sasha Banks won with the bank statement. After the match, Bailey and Sasha Banks hug it out. Everyone's all happy, cheerful, and half the WWE Universe is wondering what the fuck is going on. We then have Elias on stage trying to plug his album. He's interrupted by Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman takes a moment to plug the Evolution pay-per-view and how he's proud of the women, especially his mixed tag team match partner, Alexa Bliss. Then he addresses the match of Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley and reminds all of us that he is still the monster in the bank. Then Kevin Owens comes out, he starts babbling on the microphone. He says that Braun Strowman's problems have just begun. Constable Baron Cuball comes out and says that he has found somebody that can control Braun Strowman's temper. And out comes Jinder Mahal. What? And to make a long story short, too late! Sunil Singh and Jinder Mahal are basically fed to Braun Strowman. It's kind of funny how Jinder Mahal went from this big heel character to pretty much being a joke character along the lines of our truth We could be seriously putting him into a feud with somebody, but we're just putzing around with him for some reason. We then have Natalia versus Mickey James looking like the Power Ranger. Alexa Bliss was at ringside. This was a decent match. As you can expect, Alexa Bliss had a little bit of interference in this. Mickey James got the Power Ranger kick on Natalia for the pin. Once again, we have Elias trying to plug his CD. He's interrupted by Authors of Pain. They come out. They say they want to face anybody but Titus Worldwide. Sure enough, Titus Worldwide comes out. After a verbal back and forth between Titus and Authors of Pain, they fight. Titus Worldwide goes over. I guess we're going to be seeing this probably for the next three more weeks. Backstage, we find out that Kevin Owens will have a match at SummerSlam against Braun Strowman. And no matter how Braun Strowman loses, he will lose the Money in the Bank contract. We then come to our next match, Mojo Rawley versus Tyler Breeze. Again, this is a glorified squash match, as you can guess. Mojo Rawley won with a sit-down powerbomb. Once again, we have Elias on stage trying to schlep his CD. He's interrupted by Finn Balor. Yeah. Going into our next match, Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. Dolph Ziggler was at ringside. This would have been a really good match, but due to Dolph Ziggler knocking Finn Balor off of the top rope, catching the disqualification, Seth Rollins comes out for the save. Kurt Angle comes out and then makes this a tag team match. Finn Balor and Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Yay. Finn Balor and Seth Rollins won this one. This really didn't need to be a tag match. I guess we were just killing time. We then have Ember Moon versus Liv Morgan. Once again, what the I think Liv Morgan and Ember Moon have faced each other at least five times in the past month and a half or so, with only a slight break to put Sarah Logan into it. Seriously, can we just mix the matches up a little bit? I guess that's too much to ask for. Anyways, Ember Moon won with the Eclipse. Backstage, we find out that Seth Rollins will be facing Dolph Ziggler again for the Intercontinental title at SummerSlam. And then after a lengthy recap of Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley, Elias is once again on the stage. He's interrupted by Kurt Angle, who just tells him that he has time to plug his music. And instead of actually playing something, what does Elias do? What he does best, waste time. He's then interrupted by Bobby Lashley going into our next match against Roman Reigns. So in case you missed it on the WWE Network, we have Roman Reigns vs. Bobby Lashley 2, Electric Boogaloo. 
Despite this being highly repetitious, this was actually an okay match. It was a lot of back and forth. There were quite a few near falls between Lashley and Reigns. I was actually thinking there was going to be a dusty finish to this, but Roman Reigns got the spear on Lashley for the pin. So at SummerSlam, we're going to be seeing Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the 9,284th time. Can't wait to see that. It's probably going to be the main event. But after the match, both Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley shook hands. As Lashley was walking up the ramp, Roman Reigns stood tall in the ring, and we closed tonight's Raw. As far as the matches go, they were subpar. There were some good ones, but there were a lot of bad ones. It was cool to hear that we're going to have an all-women's pay-per-view, but as a whole, this seemed to be a very talk-heavy Raw. I guess we'll find out tomorrow on SmackDown what the reaction for the women's pay-per-view will be. But I'll do it for the Raw recap. Leave a comment down below what you thought of tonight's Raw, what you thought of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Rody. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya. And now they're all best of friends again. Jeez. Shit. <laughs> Fuck.